who experience a Tenebrae service on today. So we will now begin with an opening prayer. We're thankful for those who are here in the sanctuary, as well as those who are joining us online. And we pray now that we would center ourselves in the Lord as we begin this most serious moment in the life of the church. Won't you pray with me? God, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. God, you were with us throughout the entire day, and it is by your grace and your mercy that we do find ourselves here. God, we did not come just because there was a service planned, but we came because we wanted to celebrate you and to worship you, God. We wanted to remember, God, what you did for us on that Thursday of Holy Week over 2,000 years ago. We wanted to try to walk in your footsteps so that we could appreciate all the more who you are in us and in our lives, God. And so, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will now have its way in this worship experience. We pray, God, that it would be meaningful to us, but more importantly, that your name would be lifted up, that your sacrifice would be lifted up. So, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would have its way in the media team, in the music ministry, among the deaconesses and the class leaders who will be serving. We pray, God, that you would be with the ministerial staff and most importantly with the preacher who will bring our meditation. So, God, have your way as we enter into worship. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. We're going to ask that you would stand and join in singing two verses of There's a Fountain Filled with Blood. Uh, there were some slides, but for some reason, email does not seem to be working right today, so the media team hasn't received them, though they've been sent several times. So let's just lift up. There is a fountain filled with blood. have Reverend Tina Nelson come forward with our scripture reading, which will be followed by our communion meditation, which will be brought to us by Brother Ray Pincham. Good evening, Lomax. Good evening. Our scripture lesson this afternoon, this evening, will be taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, and we will be reading verses 14 through 23. Luke chapter 22, beginning with verse 14, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. When the hour came, 
he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then he began to ask one, then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today's, <clears throat> today's meditation is about the Last Supper. Now, while preparing for this message, for some reason, uh, my thoughts were continually revisiting a movie I had seen in my youth. This movie had Sidney Poitier and Spencer Tracy in it. There are many among you who probably remember this movie. <clears throat> it was about a liberal middle-aged couple who were anxiously awaiting to meet the fiancé of their daughter who had just announced her engagement to her parents. But unknown to Spencer Tracy, whose daughter was white, the man she was about to bring home was a black man. <clears throat> now, you young people out there might be asking yourselves the question, so what's the big deal? <laughs> now, you have to understand that this movie was made in 1967 mm -hmm. during the civil rights era mm -hmm. when this country and our culture was not yet quite ready for a union between the races of this kind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now you older folks might be asking yourself the question or should I say more seasoned folks what does this have to do with the price of tea in China? Well, I'm going to ask you to bear with me just a little while, and I want you to consider the thought, the title of this movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, hide me behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In the Synoptic Gospels, the accounts of the Last Supper, it was Jesus who instructed the disciples to 
prepare for the festival of unleavened bread. It was, it was and still is a high time in the Jewish community. It marked the time of remembrance when the people of Israel were delivered from Egypt. And in particular, when the death angel passed over the homes of those whose doors were covered with the blood of the Passover lamb. All of this was in keeping with the old Mosaic covenant. And so they diligently prepared for this event. Throughout the life and ministry of Jesus, he gave clues of his true purpose and what was yet to come for his people. Jesus' words during the Last Supper about the unleavened bread and the cup was also echoed in what he said after having fed the 5,000. He said, I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He goes on to say that I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Moreover, during the life of Jesus, people and even the disciples weren't quite sure who he was. Now in Matthew 16, 13, 16, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? And he said, I'm sorry, and they said, <clears throat> they say John, the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the uh, other prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Now, have you ever been in class and had a teacher ask you, well, what is the answer to this question? And you really don't know and you're just kind of guessing. Uh, I kind of feel like <laughs> he was thrown in that same situation where he gave an answer that he thought was right and he hit the mark. Now Jesus would, would, would say to them, he would confirm that he was right. He would confirm it. But then he would turn right around and tell all of them, don't you share this with anybody. Now do you think that might have caused a level of confusion for them? Let alone how all of this was going to play out. They didn't know. But Jesus knew. Guess who's coming to dinner? Now back to Sidney Poitier and Spencer Tracy. As Spencer Tracy and his wife waited anxiously for the arrival of their son-in-law. Now his wife was played by Catherine Hepburn, another fantastic actress. Now, they knew the character of their daughter and had some kind of expectations of what this man was going to be like that was coming to their home. Now, they figured that he'd be intelligent. They figured that he would be a free and progressive thinker and had a progressive worldview because they were progressive people. And they hoped and strongly believed that the man that she had chosen was going to love and take care of her. But never, in his wildest of dreams, in their wildest of dreams, did they think she was going to be bringing home a black man. Likewise, the apostles, 
as they waited for Jesus, they knew that this man was their beloved teacher. They knew that this was their rabbi. They knew that this was their dearest of friends. But even as he came and sat at the table with them and explained the new covenant with them, they had no idea that sitting next to them at that table was the Passover lamb itself. That it was his blood that was to be shed and sacrificed for the sins of the whole world. Guess who's coming to dinner. Now, as all this played out, the apostles would uh, have a greater understanding. Uh, but the question remains for some of us. Why would anyone endure such humiliation, such hardship, such unbelievable, excruciating pain, the answer is simple, my friends. It was love. The love that was so great that it was the very bridge that reconnected us to God, the Father. Through our faith in Jesus Christ. John 15, 13 states, No man hath greater love than this, than he laid down his life. For a friend. Amen. Guess who's coming to dinner? Back to Sidney Portier and Spencer Tracy. Now, Spencer Tracy, in his closing monologue of this movie, he gave uh, what some would say was his magnum opus, which means his greatest performance of his life. You see, uh, Spencer was very sick during the filming of this movie. They weren't even sure that he would live through the filming. But he gave this closing monologue, which was quite moving. He stated that he knew that his daughter and his son-in-law would face crazy hardship, that they would face terrible, terrible prejudice and hateful people. But he looked into the eyes of his wife and he said, if you love each other half as much, half as much, is I love this woman, then that's everything. Now imagine that. This man had the kind of confidence and the love that he had in his wife. And he believed in his heart of hearts that if they love each other half as much, they could face anything. Now I know that God calls us to love one another as he loved us. But I ask you this question, family. What if we just loved each other half as much as God loves us? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, following on Brother Ray's theme of guess who's coming to dinner, there was one at the table whose name was Judas Iscariot. Jesus was there and Judas was there. And he didn't deny Judas the bread and the wine. Guess who's coming to dinner? Not just Jesus, but some Judases as well, in you and in me, who do not want to come to the table without having confessed who we are in our areas of weakness, 
But thanks be to God that God does not deny us the bread and the wine, the grape juice, when we confess our sins one to another. And so at this time, we will ask our deaconesses to come as we go a little further with Jesus on this journey. We're around the table with him as our host as we celebrate communion together. Let your light so shine before men and women that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We would ask you now to stand for the invitation. If any man or woman sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to Almighty God. You may be seated. Let us join in the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who are thy great mercy, has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now join in the collect together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who is in the same night he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God.
this time we would ask those in the back to come forward and we will have those on my left go to Reverend Polite and those on my right will go to Reverend Monica and they will return to your seats so that we may be communed together. body of Christ which was broken for you on Calvary's tree you may take and eat and feast on it in your heart by faith with thanksgiving also you have the cup of Christ Christ spilled blood you may take and drink you may it restore you unto everlasting life and as the musician plays softly we'll have our deaconesses come and receive the cups Let us now share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. time we're going to have a moment of reflection as we prepare to enter into uh, the service of Tenebrae. Before we have our video, let me just share a little bit about what Tenebrae is all about. The word Tenebrae comes from the Latin meaning darkness. The Tenebrae is an ancient Christian Good Friday often or Monday Thursday ritual and it involves the gradual diminishing of light so that we begin uh, with all of the candles lit and as each reading is read a candle will be extinguished that will ultimately leave us in darkness other than the Christ candle and the candles that are on the altar and it's to remind us of the period that we are going into as we begin Good Friday and the darkness of that day which is ultimately illuminated by uh, Resurrection Sunday morning. And so um, we've abbreviated this service because normally there are 16 readings, we only will have 11 tonight. Um, and so after the video, then we will allow our deaconesses a moment to light the candles, we'll lower the lights, and then we will follow with the readings which will be read by various class leaders from Lomax, amen?
Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kenron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them when he said to them, I am he. They drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let those men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Anas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with him, standing and warming himself.
The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Anas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Zachary Beaver, now Simon Peter, was standing and warming himself. And they said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the seven of the highest priests, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied him, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, take him, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authority said to him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, 
my servants would, would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am king, for this, is, for this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is the truth, who, everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scowled him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him up to you that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Then the chief priests and officers saw him. They cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities asked him, what a law, we have a law, and by the law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was made himself, the, sorry. Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities asked him, we have a law, and by that law, we ought to, he ought to die, because he has made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard these, name, these words, he was uh, more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, you will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it has been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin.
this, Pilate sought to release him. But the religious authorities cried out, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in, he and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, behold your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest then said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. At this time, we'll invite everyone to stand as we sing our closing hymn, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone. As we prepare to close out, just let me remind everyone that the candle that you see before you on the Tenebrae table is the Christ candle. It's the same candle that we used during Advent when we celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ. And now we come to this Thursday on the day before we remember that Christ will die and yet Christ will come again. And so we see this candle the full circle of Christ's lifespan, 
as he was here on the earth for the sins of the whole world. Tonight we want to thank most especially our deaconesses for their hard work in preparing our tenebrae table and setting up for communion. We want to thank also um, the music ministry that was here tonight. We want to thank Brother Ray for what he did. We want to thank our class leaders for doing those readings and our media team for being here. And we will share with you that our journey doesn't end tonight, it continues to tomorrow. On Good Friday, there are three opportunities for you to worship. I'll be preaching at nine o'clock at Pennsylvania Avenue with the closeout preacher being our own bishop. At noon, there is a community service here in Arlington at Mount Olive. And then at seven o'clock, we're excited to have seven of our lay people give their reflections on the seven last sayings of Christ. So we hope you'll come out and we hope that you'll bring a friend as we remember Christ's sacrifice for us. We'll receive um, the benediction at this time. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, unto him who was able to present us before the presence of his throne with exceedingly great joy, to the all-wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and let the people of God say amen. amen. We'll ask Sister Campbell to play softly as uh, the deaconess come and extinguish the candles. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 